song right there. But today we're talking about custom guitars. Right. And usually, custom guitars are when you want to make a very tasteful addition to an existing guitar. That's right. Say, adding a Floyd Rose to a Gibson 335. Right, exactly. But we're going to do a more unique situation. Right. And Justin's going to tell us about his Taylor BTO custom guitar, which right. I think is one of the most gorgeous guitars I've ever seen. I think Justin is going to talk about his experience going to the Taylor mm -hmm. factory, mm -hmm. kind of what getting a built-to-order BTO guitar mm -hmm. entails, if it's something that you might be interested in, because right. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. Yeah, it was a, it was a very cool experience, and obviously I love my guitar. I think it's mm -hmm. uh, about four years old now. Yep. So Justin used to work at a guitar shop. That's right. That sold Taylor stuff. Yeah, we were uh, one of the biggest Taylor dealers in Florida. We sold a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and so Taylor does this really unique thing called Taylor University, where they fly people out. I mean, it was a week. All expenses paid, basically, and uh, they let you tour the factory for a few days. Um, so I said a week, five days, whatever. And usually, week. usually, yeah, usually it's a person with you know like a little thing on their hip with the microphone. They're like, "Welcome to Taylor, <laughs> here at Taylor, our mission state," you know. Right, and uh -huh. by happenstance, Bob Taylor was there, and he gave us the tour every day. And I got to ask Bob awesome. Taylor all these questions. Mm -hmm. So. Um, my tailor rep at the time was this guy named uh, Aaron, Aaron Pablo. Awesome dude. Wow. Shout out to that guy. What If you ever guy. watched it, I love that yeah, guy. Yeah, man. He was always super kind, super polite. I loved my tailor rep so much that when he had a baby, I bought him a gift. You know if what If you've I'm ever saying? seen like the Taylor Roadshow poster, yeah. that's Aaron. No? Yeah, that's right. This is good looking he's, guy. He's amazing. Yeah, uh-huh. And he's a really good guitar player, super humble, and uh, just happy to be there all the time. So anyways... Um, I think actually it was him pulling for me to go too because I think sure. I was supposed to be just the owner of the company. So anyways, we go out there and Bob Taylor gives us a tour of the factory over and over again. He entertained every bad question that you could possibly imagine mm -hmm. and did it with a smile. Sure. And at that point, he was just doing the Cameroon ebony sourcing, which was actually a huge inspiration for the field that I went into, environmental science. At the time, I hadn't really chosen a major. And hearing him and just talk... Just a little bit of background on that. It's like right. Taylor is a company that believes in like replenishing what they take from the earth. Right. So in Cameroon and stuff, they're kind of building factories and trying to do things the right way. Yeah, it's Whereas back person... in the day, you could just level forests and just get... Well, the main thing for that was, and I know the video is about the guitar, but it, this was all part of it, is that he um, he was saying that the unemployment rate, in Ca uh, unemployment rate in Cameroon was like 88%. It was insanely high. And basically, the, these people would go into the forest, and the buyers were only buying black ebony. And he said only 1 in 10 ebony trees were black. They have white streaks. Mm -hmm. So he came in, he built the only place that, as I mean, as far as I know, the only place right now you can get legally sourced ebony, and it's going to have streaks in it. I think that's really awesome. Oh no! Yeah, cool. <clears throat> so, but I mean, again, what goes into building a guitar is a very complicated process. Oh yeah, especially with like the woods involved and like the, everything from like the bracings. Right. Some of it is, you know, it's if you've never really looked into it, it's such a such a deep. It's field amazing. That it's you so can, like, amazing. So there's so many different options as far as like getting a BTO mm -hmm. guitar from like a custom shop. I know Fender has a great custom shop. Right. Uh, and a lot of them can be kind of expensive too. So it's like. Right. The sticker shock of how much it is for a, for a big company to custom order a guitar might make a little more sense after we kind of go through. That's right, and actually, I I also have an Albert Lee like Sean does, and mm -hmm. mine is uh, not not custom shop, but it is custom. Um, I had them do the the through body at the time they weren't offering the color I had, mm -hmm. and uh, then we had it all wired up special. So yeah, for sure, um, I'm definitely a. Uh, a guy who likes you yeah. Know, so stuff. it could it, you know you don't necessarily have to get a BTO from scratch. Right. A lot of times you can modify it, exactly. like modifying a three thirty five with Floyd Rose. With a Floyd Rose. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I chose uh, what I chose and. Um, so first of all, it's a grand concert. You can see the Sean's guitar is bigger. His yep. is a grand auditorium. Grand auditorium. And again, the right. size of it has such a huge effect on the sound. Right. A dreadnought being one of the bigger ones, it has like a deeper sound. Right. Grand Auditorium, um, I feel, is a great balance between striking mm -hmm. and Grand Concert also. Yeah, yeah. Like, depending on the woods that you have, mm -hmm. all that stuff makes a factor in how deep it sounds, right. the sustain, how bright it sounds. Taylor specifically, I love Taylor guitars. Mm -hmm. I love how they're set up. I think a lot of their off-the-shelf models are a little too bright for my personal taste. Right. But I love the GA3. Yeah. And yours is, has some similar features. Right? Yeah, so I like to use these strings called clear tone reds. Um, this guitar can be a lot brighter than it is, whether you use the Elixir Phosphor Bronze or the Elixir 8020s. Um, I like to use the clear tone reds, and actually these are perfect right now because they're just about dead. They're mm -hmm. almost to where I need to change them, and that's honestly how... And they're also red. Yeah. Which, like, how sexy is this guitar right. with, like, the crimson binding and the... I can't even... So, so, basically, the reason I chose the guitar that I did was because 90% of the stuff that I play is stuff like 
like like you know like that kind of yeah kind of intricate you know a lot of sure. finger style a lot of jazz chords um, so I wanted a smaller body because volume wasn't an issue to me. Balance was an issue to me. I didn't want um, a lot of bass because it's not necessary for me. Uh, not that this doesn't have a good thump, but you know when you play a dreadnought, that is sure. the guitar. You uh -huh. know, oof, a wolfy sound. Um, at the time, I had my Albert Lee, and I wanted the scale length to be the same, which is 25 and a half inches. So it's a shorter scale length. So I'm able to put fatter strings on uh, to drive the top, but because they travel a shorter distance than normal, they don't feel as, as hard to push down, but they feel thick under your hands. Um, they also were kind enough to do the same V carve that is on my Albert Lee. So this neck has the same uh, kind of V-shaped carve on the back. Um, as far as a, a, a design, that was mostly the sonic choices. I knew I wanted Indian Rosewood just because it is, you know, in a lot of ways the um, pinnacle of guitar tone woods, right? Like there's, sure. there's I maple. Mean, so is, and, that, is that the top and the sides? In no, no, no. Just the, the back okay. and sides here are, okay. are uh, Indian Rosewood. And you can see, like, it's really cool. I chose the red purfling uh, or binding, you know, I think they call it purfling right here because the binding is actually Coca Bolo, uh, the which is a um, Mexican rosewood, basically. And the reason I chose Coca Bolo is because it has red in it, and I chose the red purfling, and normally I wouldn't put plastic on a guitar, but I like how it comes up, and it brings out these purple spots in the Indian rosewood. Uh, I think it's just, just beautiful. I'll kind of move it in the light so you can see. Yeah, and I'll put pictures and stuff. Like right, that, so. and then so, uh, and then I chose, I, I really like minimalist things despite my pedal board uh, <laughs> so uh, I chose for the dots to be here and they just alternate there's two for the 12th and then they start going here for the um, 15th and the 17th so honestly at this point you know I, I rarely use the dots so it was just more of like an aesthetic choice of having them look nice like that mm -hmm. um, one of the other unique things is I had them do uh, an unfinished neck right it's it's not I mean it's not unfinished like the Albert Lee where it's linseed right. oil, but mm -hmm. it is unfinished as though it's not high gloss. Some um, people don't like a gloss neck mm -hmm. because it kind of sticks. Some people like right. it because they can glide glide around on it and exactly. it does, doesn't bother them. Right. It's just your own personal thing. It's just something you should think um, about if you're picking a guitar. And then I have these awesome Goto oh, tuners. Oh, tuners are... They, tuners the, might be my favorite. The ratio... Uh, the What makes a good tuner is do the gears hold and what's the ratio? So for every turn, how many turns internally are the gears doing, basically? And this uh, has a, an extremely high ratio, so it's very easy to tune, uh, to restring, and it stays in tune. Um, also, we have the back strap here, which is Indian Rosewood to um, match the headstock. So this is a separate piece of wood on the back of the head? Yeah, that... it's, it's an overlay. So the neck and everything are here, and then they overlaid, you can see, a piece of rosewood. Totally an aesthetic choice. No no tone. I mean, someone's probably going to tell me, like... Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, mm -hmm. oh, and the frequencies of... Yeah, so whatever. I did it because it looks cool. I'm just being honest. Um, I did the normal Taylor logo. When you look at BTOs, there are so many out there that have, like, pelicans running up, and, like, sure. they're beautiful. Yeah, Don't get me wrong. Like some kind of vine thing. Right, it's like... intricate. Like, mm -hmm. all this color here... I just wanted something that Justin Mitchell at 55, you know, 65 years old with a glass of scotch mm -hmm. finger style. Yeah. That's, you know, playing. Exactly. That's what I pictured. Because you already have the butterfly tattoo on your back. Exactly. So uh, you don't, you're going to regret that. <laughs> exactly. If you don't already. <laughs> That's a, well, so. The other thing that you'll notice is I negated uh, a pick guard. No pick guard. Not even a clear one. Um, I rarely, Risky choice. I rarely play with a pick. I don't let idiots play my guitar, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, when I do play with a pick, I am I am very I'm a good player. I've been playing a long time. I don't I don't scratch. I don't yeah, you know I don't play wildly. Um, the rosette here is actually three pieces of um, Coca Bolo cut to fit. So even though the rosette is wood, and I wanted it all to kind of reflect itself at, from a design. Um, this top, I wanted a cedar top. But when we got to the room where I chose the wood, I held all this wood in my hand. Like I decided that I wanted the back and sides to be the way they are so that they would curve into the strap button. I mean, everything was by, they let me choose everything. And one of the reasons I wanted Justin to talk about this is he's so thoughtful about every feature of this guitar. Right? Yeah. I, I think a lot of BTOs is like, I want like a Taylor 214. With a scorpion on Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, all right, $6,000. No, this was, yeah. yeah, even that choice was, I, I, and 
the real thing I can't say enough is that this guy from Taylor is a professional luthier with mm-hmm. like twenty two year old however I was Justin being like right. these have to go this way <laughs> and yeah. he was like totally. He was to- he was totally fine with all of it because the craftsmanship is so yeah. uh, you know and I think he appreciated my enthusiasm where I was like you know um, so anyways I wanted cedar but when we got to the room they had this which there wasn't a lot of it's sinker rose uh, sorry sinker redwood so it's a redwood tree that has fallen to the bottom of a lake or a river and then mm-hmm. uh, soaked up all these nutrients uh, which I seriously don't think do anything to the tone it just makes these dark streaks makes it look really beautiful. And they actually have to float it up with these airbags and then like dry it and cut it. The sourcing of wood nowadays <laughs> is like so insane. Right. The stories that you will hear. Right? Yeah. Like scavengers, like scuba diving, oh, looking yeah. for like, just to get like wood to source for like exotic guitar Absolutely. parts or whatever. Yeah, yeah, one of the things that he was talking about is sourcing koa is so difficult because it's, um, uh, it's illegal to cut down. You know, mm-hmm. so you'd have these people who have like super expensive houses and they just, you know, a kid needs to go to college. I'll cut down one of my koa trees on my private property, which I can do mm-hmm. and sell it for literally $10 million. I mean, oh he God. pointed to a pallet of wood while we were there and he's like, anybody want to guess how much that is? And it was like a half million dollars for just a little pallet of koa wood. That's crazy. amazing. That's crazy. So anyways, uh, the, these knobs are ebony. This is ebony. The fretboard is ebony. Um, I chose it because, um, it's. I think it looks cool and it's soft, you know, it's like a, I mean, it's a really soft wood on the fretboard. Um, and also it, it's darker. So it looked good with the dark streaks that were running through the, the sinker redwood. Um, also I didn't want any ornate abalone, anything here, you know, again, I was trying to go for like old man, you know, you know, finger style. Um, I mean, that's, that's really the guitar. And the, the cool thing isn't that I, I did all this. It's not like a look at what I designed. It's like, look what they let me do. Yeah. Every single part of this, they let me tell them this is what I want. And they didn't ask any questions. Now, the one thing I did, there were a few other people that were there that did this as well. And they will not hesitate to tell you that's not a good idea. You know, that's which is important. Yeah, because they don't want to build a one of a kind guitar that you're not going to want. So fortunately for me, they're like, no, that's a sweet guitar. Right. So they were Mm -hmm. they were on board with what I was making. Um, but they, uh, yeah, but like, you know, someone like me might come and be like, I want a spruce top with coa sides right. and a cedar back. Right, right. And then I want it to be eight strings, right. but I want the, you know, it's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, like, exactly. what are you doing? You know? So, um, uh, yeah. They, and they were really accommodating. I mean, the main thing I can't stress enough is the neck. I was like, I want an acoustic guitar that basically plays like my electric guitar. And they mm-hmm. were like, oh, we can do that. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so I don't want this to turn into like a like a Taylor endorsement video because there's a lot of great custom shops out there. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it's just kind of like just appreciating the craftsmanship that goes into guitars. Yeah. And luthiers, they just they just know their stuff, and it is it's such like a lifelong pursuit. Yeah. In guitar building. And yeah. and so I can't uh, uh, attest for a lot, but yeah, so we don't turn into like Taylor fanboys, even though I absolutely am one and want a Taylor <laughs> nylon. I want a Taylor nylon more than anything in the world right now, um, but. Uh, Fender Custom Shop was great when mm-hmm. we worked at the store. PRS was unreal. Oh like, my God. And uh, Music Man was really good. So, um, and Taylor. Uh, I think those are the four main companies that just like, you want it, we got it. And we'll get back to you the same day. So mm-hmm. that was really cool. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. This is a wealth of education that comes into it. You know? yeah. So even if maybe you're not, even if you're not looking to do a custom shop guitar, because again, it, it's an exorbitant amount of money. Yeah. But so, and they made it real clear because I was all, I was a little bit un. Uh, look at me reaching for my beard. Wow, oh, it's like you, you look old. I shaved time. it. No. <laughs> I feel like you're reaching into your future yeah, that's beard right. though. Is what I felt so, like. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, they explained that when you design a, a guitar, think about like their factory. Right, and they they make six hundred series one day. Right, they make mm-hmm. this series one day. Sure. So your guitar comes in, and it needs uh uh it's doing like the nitro finish or it's doing this finish, whatever the case may be. They now have to redo everything that they're doing. Right, like different attack. It it kind of throws a wrench in their assembly line, basically. Yeah. You know, and when the you know if you you could have seen like the room where their hammer frets. Right. Well, if you want a different size fret or it's a different size neck or anything like that, this guy goes from being like banging out, mm-hmm. banging it right to having to thoughtfully re, you know, not that they don't do everything thoughtfully, but they have sure. to like consciously be like, this is something getting in the zone and just hammering. Them out right. Exactly. 
But so, uh, again, I, I, I really think that the vast majority of people do not need a custom guitar. Right? No. It, it, it's more just understanding the parts of a guitar and what goes into it. And I actually, I helped Sean pick this very guitar out. This, I, yeah. I told him, I was like, he came in and he was ready to spend a lot of money. And I was like, dude, that's the perfect guitar for uh, me. I, I was in a bind. Yeah. I, I had to get a project done that day. Right. And I was like, I need something. I never liked the tails. I thought they were too bright. Right. And then Justin's like, GA3. Yep. Because like, you didn't boom. need the electronics and you, exactly. you know, you uh -huh. were, yeah. So there's no, there's really in a lot, of, in a lot of times, there's not a need to spend two thousand plus dollars on an instrument because really, like if anything, the, our old guitar tech Doug, yeah. he literally played a eighty nine dollar Epiphone one time and made it his lead tone sound better than mine sounds today. I was yeah. like, I what? hate you. Your hands are, you know, it's ridiculous. So really, yeah, it's not, it's not a necessity, but man, it is. It's pretty special experience. You it's know? cool and just a learning experience of knowing what tone woods maybe you want, what mm -hmm. kind of neck you want, what mm -hmm. kind of tuners you want. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know maybe it, your dream guitar exists in a manufacturer you didn't even think of right you know and then you don't have to get it built to order you can just get a a seagull or a breed log oh, yeah. or something like that and you know because if i have yeah if i have one piece of advice um about choosing a guitar which kind of seems what this video is ending up being about is you have to play everything it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what it looks like it doesn't matter what what you think the brand is or whatever right the albert lee that sean and i both have um, about eight years ago, oh man, yes, yeah, eight years ago, a That's gold crazy. one came in with a white tortoiseshell pick guard. And it's it like was, a sparkle gold, right? It was right? ugly, man. I mean, I, I, didn't, I was like, Pfft, and I didn't play it. Some people still think that Albert Lee is ugly. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah. the day that we sold that guitar, I set it up for the guy and I had to play it to make sure that it sounded right. And I was like, I should have bought this guitar. I know, because right? they take forever to get. You know, like yeah. I waited, I put my order in for mine. I mean, it, like I said, it was like sure. customized basically. Yeah. It took a while. So it took like, yeah, I would say eight months to get it from them. Uh, same with this, it took about six months. You know, you can't expect to have it fast. But anyways, you know, the moral of the story is, is that had I played that gold one, I probably would have bought it, not even care what it looks like. Just like, this is my guitar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my my cognitive bias kept me from owning yeah. my dream guitar. So go to Guitar Center, Sam Master, your local place, and just try out different guitars you That's might right. not pick up. Because yeah. how would you know that you wanted a grand concert? Yeah. Unless you played a grand concert. Oh, right? man. And yeah. you have the difference between a grand auditorium or and a dreadnought or another, a parlor. Another like, perfect example, and I know that everyone uh, is is may not like this, but... I, there was like this big thing about how awesome Gretsch guitars were, right? Mm -hmm. And then I finally played one, and I used to tell people Gretsch guitars were awesome. And then I played one. I don't like their necks. I don't like their fretboards. It's just not for everybody. There's yeah. not any. Yeah, they're they're obviously good guitars, but I was speaking like out of turn, kind of. I was like, oh, they're amazing. Right. But everybody I, says that. Yeah. So I agree. And then I played but, one, yeah. and I was like, oh, oh man, not not for me, not my neck. There you go. Anyhow, moral story is just try stuff out. Try stuff out. Be thoughtful about it. Figure out what you want, and then you'll be. Uh, in a position to make a more educated decision when it comes time to maybe spend a good amount of money to have a guitar that you'll have for the rest of your life into your old man days. That's right. And then to you in my will when I die. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, and then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to stick a Floyd Rose on that. That's thing. right. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah.